be great tone. This is that. Episode 7. It's going to be the five one, so y'all just get ready. It's going to be the hardest one. We in L.A. It got to be the best one. We in L.A. What y'all think? See Ryan in the cut. I give it everything I got. I just worry about trying to be the best I can be. Go as hard as I can go. I'm not worrying about nobody else. I'm just in the gym every day. There's no let up. Now, I take it to another level every time I step on the court. You can talk the talk, all that leadership stuff, but the guys got to see the work. And as long as they see that, guys don't fall in line. Be great tone. That. LA right now, uh, out here working out. Me and my teammates out here getting it in before the season start. Camp coming up. Uh, it's a big season for us. Obviously, we got a, you know, a better team this year. We added some pieces, got some guys back, and you know we're trying to make the playoffs. We're trying to do this year. Like the LA vibe is always cool. I love coming out here. It's always good weather. You know, you can get some good runs at the Rico Hines, training, good working out. It's good to get away. You know, get away from your city and come out here. You know, it's a lot of stuff to do out here also, so it's gonna be fun. The first regret I did was my senior year in high school. I was young, so I kind of wanted to, you know, show people how hard I was working, get my name out there and stuff. When I was in high school, everybody just fell in love with them. And everybody was like, when the next one coming out? When the next one coming out? So then we dropped Be Great 2. We back at it. We watching Be Great episode two, which was like me getting ready for a game. And then we dropped Be Great 3. Be Great 3 was like my city, Be Great 4. It was like the next step. Big Grade 4 was when I was on my way to college. Big Grade 5 was my college choice. Uh, it was on ESPN and also it was it was uh, Florida Mr. Basketball. Big Grade 6 was like NBA pre-draft when I had entered the draft in my second year in college. Like I'm chasing a dream. This is my dream. You know, every day I play I have that little feeling inside of me. The same feeling I had when I was young. We about to go to St. Bernard's High School and work out. It's that new young boy. Oh, say I am. Yes, sir. Sam, we in LA with it, man. See Ryan in the cut. You know what I mean? They, they, they all talking about, what's up, Ryan? Yeah, I'm ready for this season. I'm definitely ready for this season. Ringo, what's good? Tell Mars I said what's good. Love you too, Auntie. Auntie on here. We're on the way to the gym. We're on the way to the gym, man. My little brother, yeah, he still hoop, but he rapped too, though. He rapped too. My little brother hooping and rapping. You know, be great tone. That. I feel like this season for me was a success. When you're playing in the G League, you get to kind of develop your game. Like you get to work on things that you may not have the opportunity to when you're up with the big team. And I think that I uh, embraced that and got a lot better on a lot of things I needed to work on. So this season, when I'm fully with the NBA team, that I'll be able to show you know all those things I got better at throughout the season. So one of my biggest goals, I think obviously our team goal this year is to want to be to make the playoffs again. Chicago is like a big, huge basketball market, and obviously I mean Michael Jordan played for the Chicago Bulls, Scottie Pittman, all these greats, and they won all these championships and stuff. And I'm not going, you know, talk too much about that. But the main thing that we're trying to do this year as a team is just put ourselves in situations, compete to make the playoffs. Obviously, we didn't make the playoffs last year, but uh, this year I think we got the team and the firepower to do it with you know good players that's going to be starting, good players that's going to be coming off the bench. To where guys coming off the bench, it ain't going to be no let up. We just coming in, dogs, killing, you know what I'm saying, competing. AC though, fan or something. Dang. Hot. This is where it get done at right here in the gym. About to get it in. About to get it in. It's hot in here too. I love hot gyms. Real trenches. <laughs> really from the trenches. It's, it's the trenches in here, you know. About to really get it in. Every day I come in the gym, I go hard. I give it everything I got. I just worry about trying to be the best I can be. Go as hard as I can go. I'm not worrying about nobody else. I'm just in the gym every day. I didn't get drafted. But that night on the draft was kind of crazy. It was just crazy because like I didn't have a draft party or anything like that. It was just me, my mom, my little brother at my house in the living room watching the draft. That first round goes by so slow because it's like five minutes between every pick. I didn't 
you know, really think I was going to go first round because, you know, my sophomore year at LSU when I decided to come out, we didn't really win. And uh, those GMs and stuff were kind of looking for people that's coming from winning programs. Then the second round hit, so I'm like, okay, I think my name finna get called in the second round. And I wasn't tripping on going second round because, like, you got dudes like Draymond Green, you got all these dudes who go second round and blow up. All I'm thinking, Draymond, I'm going to be a second round pick. We get to pick 40, and our name may get called. We get to pick 50, my name may get called. So now I'm just thinking, like, man, it probably ain't going to happen. Probably ain't going to get drafted. And my agent calling me and just telling me, don't worry about it. You know, you're going to have options. You're going to have opportunities. But that next day, my agent calls me and tells me I'm going to summer league camp with the Chicago Bulls. I worked hard in camp. I played well in camp. Kind of just took off, and I started killing. Like, I think, like, versus Washington, I had 22 and 10. And the next game versus Portland, I had 28 and 12. So boom, they offered me a two-way contract. Me, I just try to take advantage of all the days. I was up and down a lot from the G League to the NBA. What I tried to do was, whenever I went to the G League, just try to keep my head and play hard. Not like a lot of guys go to the G League and they don't play as hard because they feel like it's a demotion. Me, I just went down there and took it as an opportunity to show my skills. So every time I went down there, I tried to kill. Whether it was G League practice, G League games, try to kill. Then when I got called up, sometimes I practiced and didn't play. So in practice, I tried to kill every time, like just being on competing all year. I competed with the best players on the team, to the worst players on the team. I don't, I don't care who in the gym, it don't matter to me, I'm a competitor. I also had big games in the NBA, like versus the Lakers. That Lakers game was a big game for I me. I knew that what I did in high school, what I did in college could translate to the NBA. See, I ran off like 15 points straight in the first half, like all buckets, pulling up on people dunked on somebody on transition. So it was, it was just fun. It made me feel like I was in high school again, and that's when I just was like, okay, I can really do what I do in this league. The way I score the ball, the way I can get to the paint, the way I compete in my athleticism is for the NBA. I already knew I could make it, that I could play in the league. I won G League Rookie of the Year this year. I averaged 33 points, uh, the most points any player ever averaged in the G League. Doesn't mean much. I still got to do that in the NBA. That's all I did was compete all year last year, and I think that's why I ended up earning my contract. Close to the end of the season versus the Knicks, I went up for a block versus Kylo Quinn, and I fell on my wrist, and that broke my wrist, and I was out for the rest of the season. I knew my next opportunity to show what I could do was summer league, the second summer league. Uh, by the time I got back, you know, it was like three weeks before summer league, so I had like three weeks to get ready for summer league. Worked my butt off in the weight room, on the court, trying to get my skills back right, because I was out for like two months with my wrist injury. And I went to summer league, played well. Kevin Durant, he gave me a shout out and stuff, it was like, 
somebody need to sign him. Somebody need to sign him, get him out of summer league. That kind of helped me a little bit when he did that. Three days after summer league is when I signed my deal. Uh, two years guaranteed with the Chicago Bulls. And it meant a lot. And it felt good when I signed just because I knew I worked for it. I knew I deserved it. Now my goal is to try to crack that rotation. Day one, I want to be playing. I feel like I deserve it. I feel like I'm good enough. I feel like I can. I feel like I. I feel like I can contribute to a team, contribute to winning. Like right now, I've been working all summer, getting stronger, got more athletic, shooting the ball better. You know, trying to stay consistent from three, working on my balance and stuff like that. My main thing, period, going on, going from now until I'm done playing the league, just being the best competitor on the floor every time. I'm just trying to be the be the best competitor on the floor. Barbecue a meal, dude. What you gonna do?
your first time coming out here during yeah. the summer? Yeah, everybody in the NBA live out here, so the runs don't get no better than that. Especially to build and learn from uh, all this knowledge. You know what I mean? Rico done coached in the league. All the guys is in the gym. You're going to play against Russ, KD, Braun, James. It, it don't get no better than this. Iron sharp and time. You know what I mean? So getting to play against this competition and just build your confidence. Like, I've seen you out here, like, crazy you come out here during the summer and you see all these guys playing and it's a lot of personalities on the court. We're waiting on three of those Clipper guys to come so we'll have a fourth team when they get here. But until then we'll go to three. So go ahead. We got Russ, Seth, Dante Exum, Bobby Portis, and Jay Bell. That's one team. Then we got CP3, Bobby Brown, Stanley, Pascal, and Looney. That's the second team. The third team is Blakeney, Frank, Gary, Sean Williams, and Ike. You two never been here. We played the seven. Foul twice, you shoot a free throw, all right, uh, for the bucket, and you validate the win at seven, all right? Hey guys, last week, this is our last, last few weeks been really good, this is our last week. Make sure we push up and get, push ourselves, get something out of us. Make sure we crack it off, all right? Play the right way, let's get each other better a little bit. Here we go. I like it better like this, y'all know I do. Tell me on three, one, two, three. Man.
I could tell you, give me the ball. You know what I'm saying? Like that's big for your confidence. And the thing is, you put all the work in during the summer now, where you gotta take it? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Now I'm probably trying to catch it here. But like Russ, Russ knows that they should be guarding. But once I catch it, the difference between me is I play off my right foot and my left foot. Yeah. Yeah. So if I catch it and I start doing like this, you will immediately do what? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Whenever you come into a new team, you always got to respect the guys that's there but not fear them. You know what I mean? It's a way, it's a way. You know, you don't want to come in there and be arrogant and all that stuff like that. It's a way to come in there and respect them and show them that you you got it by the work. You know what I mean? Like, even if it's before practice. You know what I mean? You in there, you in there working. Then in practice, get out of it. Then when practice get over and everybody walking off the court, what you do? Man, look, the biggest thing I always say is you can talk and talk all that leadership stuff, but the guys got to see the work. And as long as they see that, guys, guys don't fall in line. Yeah. Always.